AMG 7000 series. I've had them for a while. They've been out for a while. Things were a little bit late, but we're here. So I've done something a little bit different to answer the question, how much cooling do you actually need? Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Risa, the four-piece variety of Wookiee Triple XL. And I've got the Castle 360 and the 240. And I've been playing with all three chips across six different benchmarks to find out if cooling is going to give you extra performance on AMD. Because it kind of always has. I've been owners of these chips since the 1800X at the 2700X. 3950X is actually sitting in a box over there. My 5900X is sitting on a table over there. And now I have all three of the new chips that have come out. Forced into DDR5. I think a lot of us are crying about that stuff with their chipset is a bit random but auntie lisa always seems to land on her feet with these setups so um, let's be hopeful that uh, with some price decreases and uh, some pressure from team blue that will get some free performance over there thank you Aunt lisa appreciate you but for this test instead of just doing benchmarks and we already know what the general gaming performance is going to be like especially when you have something like a 4090 in the mix um we're still plebbing over here t3 with just a casual 3070 ti um you know which used to be good it was nice to have a really high end gpu but now it's just becoming relevant overnight thank you nvidia i just got it too anyway this test uh what i thought would be cool is to check 360 versus 240 because there's obviously a lot of concern about the new 95 degree thermal throttling point all i can say to that is i noticed my 1800x would throttle at about 82 to 84. that chip is still working it's over five years old now it's actually lasted longer than my 2600k it's actually lasted longer than any cpu i've had before that and um, the only one that i can think of that springs to mind that i've owned since new is a laptop which has not been put through anything as intense the 1800x was my production pc before the 2700x and then the 1800x became the second production pc and that thing has done incredible amounts of rendering i mean weeks worth of 3d rendering for some of our older stuff so i'm not too fussed about that honestly because the transistor decay is nothing like it used to be my 2600k ran at about 65 degrees for most of its lifetime at 4842 megahertz which is quite a lot of speed yes but it ran perfectly fine like that for like four and a half years um and then it's a transistor decayed and it died but the 1800x hasn't so i don't think that 95 degrees is as big of an issue as we like to think yes when things run cooler they definitely do last longer but if the tolerances are built in for that like the operating point for most engines is like 110 degrees celsius or more then that's what it's supposed to run at. It doesn't mean that it decays. It's actually good for the engine because the lubricants, etc., all work at that temperature. So I'm sort of choosing to see it like that. Like 95 degrees is not the end of the world. And so we set up with two of the better water coolers you can buy. So I've got obviously the Castle 360 and then the Castle 240, which were at our disposal. And basically, just jumping straight into the data, it was kind of pointless. There's almost no performance difference between the two, maybe a percent to 2% depending on the chip. There is a performance difference though, whether it's 6, 7600X, the 7900X or the 7950X. Yes, more cooling did mean more better, but not to a scale that I was expecting. I was hoping to see like five to 10% performance differences and be like, ha ha, you definitely need a 360 for this or that or blah, blah. Not really. The only difference between the two really was noise profile. The only one that, uh, funnily enough though, 7950X in gaming, I never heard it with a 360. With a 240, I would hear it during load screens and, and stuff where the CPU was being pushed to 70% or more, then the fans were very audible. That's really the difference between the two. The 7600X, I don't see you needing more than the 240. They were exactly the same between the 240 and the 360 performance as well. Like I said, it's so close to one another. Don't really see you really needing that. If you're looking at 7900X and up, then you're going to want it. Especially I noticed uh, during rendering, there was quite a 
quite a different noise profile. These fans only hit about 30, 40, maybe even 50%, uh, whereas with the 240, it was ramping straight up to like 80%. So yeah, I didn't cap them. I let them ramp up as much as they need to so that they would hit 100% fan if it needed to when it hit the, the upper ends of the 95 degree spectrum. And the only time I really saw that sort of temp was in multi-threaded workloads. Most of the time in gaming and stuff, it was fine. So for most of Fire Strike and Time Spa and CS, it, it was perfectly fine. Um, and no real noticeable performance difference. Bearing in mind, on the bench is 6,000 megahertz CL40 memory. Like I said, I've got the latest and greatest Asus ROG Strix X670E chipset as well. So we really expect it to get the most out of the chips, no matter what. Um, and just basically, I kind of almost feel like, I don't feel like it was a complete waste of time to come out with 1% performance, but it feels bad because I was hoping to see something cool um, from them. But I think it's just limitations of like the chip itself and the fact that this, these coolers are that good that even the 240 really almost maxes out the chip pretty much. So bullet point of the presentation is, do you need a Castle 360? Yes, if you want peace of mind and in the summer, Look, it's been hotter here in South Africa. I think if you're going 7950 or 700, uh, 700X, just get the 360 more. Because, yeah, the audio profile for gaming, especially, is going to be quite noticeable versus the 240. But if you're going 7600 level, even 7900X, I would say 240 is fine. It's actually fine. It's just going to be a bit more noise profile. So, yeah, you're really just buying audio level. That's, there's no actual real performance difference. Yes, I spent 35 hours on benchmarking to basically find that out because I had to run like 12 benchmarks per processor. I am hide the pain Harold right now. It's basically the bullet point of my presentation. But as well, what I can say to you is if you look at that 7950X, you might notice that it actually beat my 3900K score with the same SSD and same RAM. Obviously motherboard's different. Same cooling as well, literally the exact same 360, literally this exact 360. So yeah, I wouldn't say a multi-threaded AMD is quite out of the race. Like I said, I would just like to see a bit of a price compression. And one thing I will advise you to do is just kind of leave the deck on these a little bit wet. So put just a little bit more thermal paste than you would, almost so that it goes over the edges here just slightly. Then I found that I got the best, absolute best thermal performance. Um, my idle temps were room temp plus five to 10 degrees as well. I think the highest was 7950 at like low 40s uh, during idle. So there was no problem with contact is basically what I'm surmising. Um, and I know that's been a problem with a lot of the coolers, but the way the deep cool mountain stuff works, I don't think you'd have that issue. Look at the Alice or the castle if you are going to get one. Basically the bullet points of the presentation. Anywho. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe so I didn't spend all that time doing all of that benchmarking for like 1%. I appreciate you, man. Please help me out here on this one. Ah! Okay, anyway, normal. Goodbye. Hope you guys stay safe. Keep well. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.